for today's video I'm going to be wearing two different teacher hats. No, three. Three different teacher hats. Hi everyone, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. I'm an assistant principal in Southwest Sydney and today I'm going to be sharing tips for casual teachers for classroom teachers who have a casual teacher coming in and I guess my experience as being an executive who books and coordinates casual teachers as well. So before we get started I just want to remind you guys my links and everything are in the description below if you want to follow me on social media. I don't share or spam random things, it's all education based. I've written lots and lots of notes today and I also have some templates that I think will be really helpful for you if you're new to casual teaching or maybe if you just want to change things up in the classroom for when you've got someone else coming in. So I'll get to the templates in a bit. I've got some tips to come first and all of the templates I'm sharing with you in the description below to my what do you call it? Google account. So it's a shareable link. If it doesn't work, please let me know. I'll happily email anyone if you can't access it properly. And they're going to be editable as well. Um, I'm just looking at it now. Yes, I've got them in both Word and PDF versions so that you can use them that way. Too easy. All right, let's get started. So I guess just to let you know, um, I only had a small amount of casual teaching experience and that was when I went back to work after having uh, my daughter bub number one. I went back part-time to my regular school, my substantive school, and then the days I topped up with casual teaching. So if I found that, you know, rego was coming up or whatever, I, I would take on extra work. Um, but if it was a bit quieter and I wanted some more time with bub, then I would just say, sorry, I'm booked. So I was able to sort of control a little bit of my schedule a bit better that way. Being a new mum, I wanted to make sure I had a good balance and I wasn't overwhelming myself. So I worked three days I think I started. I think I incremented up at some point. Um, I can't remember how long it took me to do it, but uh, I worked at some wonderful schools in my local area. I made sure that I only put down my local area because I didn't want to be doing excessive travel. However, I know that some casual teachers are traveling very, very far to get work. Hats off to you guys because I know it's not easy. It's hard, especially if you've got a family trying to be the breadwinner and just generate an income and knowing where your money is coming from. I know it's really, really hard. Um, to be able to use the performance development framework, writing PDPs. I'm speaking with my New South Wales hat on at the moment, being in this system. Just in terms of accreditation and being able to get professional learning, it's not easy. That's a whole other video that I can work on, um, but please feel free to contact me if you've got any questions. I'm currently mentoring a couple of casual teachers through, to P through the PDP process and trying to get them included in professional learning as much as I can. Um, it's, it's hard for schools as well to be able to do that because we've got limited funds to be able to do that and we need to make sure that, you know, we're, we're allocating those funds to our em direct employees first, but we want to take care of our casual teachers too. So let's get to my main tips. So um, if you're a casual teacher, so this is me talking to casual teachers at the moment, if you are a teacher that's permanently employed or on a block or whatever, you might want to skip ahead a little bit to the other stuff, but hey, this is good information for you guys as well making contact with those schools. So, so uh, people hand in CVs, some people come and visit the schools, some people might just email it through, that's fine. Some schools will have one person in charge of all of the casuals and it's usually an executive, sometimes a senior executive, sometimes it's the principal. Uh, in my circumstance, I'm an assistant principal and we rotate each term because it can add to your workload a lot and it's good experience for all of us to be able to know how to do that. So I did it for a certain period last year and currently it's my turn um, this term to be doing it. So I'm the one that has got all the CVs at the moment. I've got phone numbers of the regulars and I use casual direct if I've exhausted avenues and I can't find anyone. That stuff that you hand in, keep it succinct and short because all I need literally is your, your contact details. I need your qualifications, your working with children's check and making sure that any of your mandatory training is up to date. So that's things like CPR, anaphylaxis, um, code of conduct. Um, code of conduct is not an online training. It's something you do in a school. So for you guys, it just means rereading it yourself and, you know, making a note that you've reread, refreshed, updated, however you want to word it. That's all I need. It can be two pages. If you've got a couple of referees, that's fine. I can call them if I'm unsure. But when push comes to shove, I just need your approval number to teach. You're working with children's check and that mandatory stuff. And your phone number. That's it. I'm just going to call you and say you're free. Because once you're in, or at least the public system and you've got your number, 
you know, that that's really all I need. The, the other stuff is just proving that you've got those qualifications. Um, update your availability. So if you suddenly got a block, let us know. It's not a problem. It just means I write down in there, has a block for term two, contact again in term three. And then whoever takes over from me in term three knows that we can contact you again. We're not going to hate you. We're not going to take you off our list or anything like that. We just need to know the details. Um, we have a spreadsheet to keep track of all of those things. So at least I know term two, here's the people that are available. These are the people that are only available on certain days. Here's the people who are available any time. It's not a problem. Just be honest about your availability. Um, and if we call you and you, if you can't work for whatever reason, if you've got a doctor's appointment, if you've already been booked, if you just want to have a day off to yourself, it's not a problem. Just say, sorry, I'm already booked. Don't worry about telling us that. It's fine. <laughs> okay. So prepping for the random day. So this is the day where they've called up. They've said you're on uh, year two or K to six, uh, and there's no work left for you, what are you going to do? So I had a tote tray, not a big massive bag thing, literally the tote trays that you have your books in. I had just a tote tray that had a ream of paper, blank paper. It had um, books for, uh, a book for sort of lower infants, a book for, you know, stage two, and a book for stage three. And I mean our picture book, a quality picture book that just sat in there, and I had open-ended activities that would go for any of those. Um, and if you want to check out a good open-ended activity um, for literacy, I did a video on how to create a book jacket. It sounds simple, but you can stretch that out over to weeks if you really want to. It's a great activity and you can do it with any grade, any grade in secondary as well. So I had those three books there um, and open-ended activities and you could stretch that out. So, you know, have spelling activities to go with it, handwriting activities to go with it, a writing activity to go with it, you know, and stretch that whole writing process out, planning, writing, publishing. Um, and I had uh, some interactive links that went with them as well. So I could jump online if I had access to it or if the kids had access on the computer, I could go over and put in the link and take them to that website, have a bunch of websites available. So if kids are doing, you know, want to put kids in rotational activities, you can send them to a website that's really good. Um, my must do can do videos are good for that. You can see how I used Google Classroom to do that. And they were just websites. You can access them freely. You don't have to be through Google Classroom. Open-ended activities is the key. If you want um, open-ended maths activity ideas, my Clever Pickles channel. So that's my kids YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, it's all maths games easy resources to use. You just need dice, counters, uh, what else do I use? Or playing cards. And most classrooms have those things. So, I mean, if you, you wanted to get a stash of something, go to, um, what's it called? Any Dungeons and Dragons store. So, um, oh my God, <laughs> game traders sell them as well. They've got cheap, cheap dice, heaps of activities you can do with those things. So if you go to that channel, they're easy to modify. Generally, it's for infants, but some of them are really good for stage two, and you could mo modify easily for stage three as well. The best open-ended maths activity that's a great warm-up is, you know, is my what's my number game. I've done that video as well. I'm just pimping out all of my other videos today. So <laughs> what's my number is where you stick a number in the middle, and they have to write quest. Sorry, not what's my number. What's the question? What's my number is a different game. Another video. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna roll today. <laughs> what is the question is where you stick the number in the middle of a bit of paper and then they have to write as many questions as they can around it that equal that number. That's a good warm up as well. Um, and if you've got that base stock of books and things there, then it doesn't matter if you've gone to a different school, a different grade, you can just pick those things up and use it. Um, obviously, if you're suddenly going back to a class that you've been to before, you'll probably need a different book. But most classrooms have a book storage area. All schools have a library. You can go and borrow something for the day. Uh, make sure you take with you lunch that you can eat on the go because you don't know if you'll have a playground duty. And I'm sorry to say most of the time we'll give you the duty because, you know, our teachers are constantly jumping on extra duties randomly when someone is um, sick and we couldn't get cover and that eats it up. And we need to make sure we're taking care of our, our teachers as well. So when we get a casual in, we're utilizing you for class duty. It's a playground duty. It's not that we hate you. We're just, you know, trying to take care of everyone as best as we can. Um, so make sure you take lunch that you can eat on the go in case you're suddenly on a duty somewhere and um, you don't have time to warm something up. Make sure you pack hat and sunnies so that if you're on duty, you're abiding by the sun safety policies. Um, and it's also good, good role modeling for our kids. If you're on that back playground duty and um, it's no hat, no play or whatever, uh, you know, you're role modeling that. Plus, you know, it's good for your protection. 
shoes and clothing. So I, I think it's important that you dress um, professionally, but you might have those random days where it's a Friday and it's a sport day, or you suddenly get there and find out it's the athletics carnival day or the color run. Have a pair of joggers, um, you know, neat and tidy trackies and a, a shirt in the car ready to go. So at least you can participate. You don't want to go home with random colors all over your nice shoes. Um, if that happens to be the case, if you've got them in the car, you just tell whoever's there, I'll give me five minutes. I've got clothes in the car. I'll just get changed. That makes you look really prepared as well. <laughs> um, and it means you get to have fun during the day if you join in those things. Um, okay. So moving on. So you've, you've gotten there and you go to the classroom, check, uh, sorry, not to the classroom, to the, to the school. There's usually a communication board somewhere. So the person who's booking the casuals will meet you, tell you what's going on for the day. Still go and have a look at that board because sometimes there's other things going on that might impact you throughout the day that might not be mentioned in the information um, that's given to you. So for example, national simultaneous story time is coming up. If you're, if that's up on the board, you'll suddenly go, oh, okay, my class is participating in that. Or there's a link up there that everyone else is looking at. I'm going to write that down so I can use it with my class. So check that board and check the duty roster because sometimes they might give you the stuff and just say, yep, you're Michelle for today. Go and check and see if Michelle has a duty and if you're meant to be doing Michelle's duty. Um, so when you get to the classroom, pop your head into the teacher next door and just say, I'm the cover for today. My name is Beck. Um, is there anything in particular you think I need to know about the class before I get started for today? And they're going to go, yep, Johnny's been living at grandma's for the last week because dad left or um, so-and-so is, is fasting at the moment for Ramadan so that, you know, they're not meant to be having anything. They might be tired, you know, give them a bit of a bound, a bit of extra space. Um, you know, so-and-so is just coming back from suspension today. That'll be interesting with a different teacher. Just those little things that might not be there. Um, and then when you go in the room, have a look around the room. The teacher may have left something for you. If you've been booked in advance, the teacher should have left something for you. This is a big pet peeve of mine. If someone has been booked in advance and has not left work for you, I think it's very unprofessional and that definitely needs to be, um, an expectation of executive at, at my school. It's an expectation and everyone does it hands down. They're really good at it. Um, if that nothing has been left though, um, that's when you need to decide what you're doing for the day. So before you do that, though, look around the room, check out the class job chart. So you know who's doing what, and then there's no arguments. And you know, you can go, right, who are the messengers for today? Those two people, no arguments. And you're keeping things consistent for the kids. See if there's home reading boxes around, because chances are they'll need to change that for the day. Um, check the walls for health plans, anaphylaxis, allergies, um, asthma, they should be on display in a classroom. So check the walls and see if there are. You are allowed to take a photo of that so you can have it for the day. So at least if you're on playground duty, um, you know, you want to have a quick refresher of that kid's face so you know who it is, take a photo of it, not a problem. Just make sure at the end of the day you delete it. You're not distributing it. Um, it's, you know, kids' information. We don't want that plastered around anywhere. Um, uh, school rules behavior system that the class is using and the teacher's timetable. So that I have an expectation that that's on display in the classroom. So at least you can keep things consistent throughout the day. You know what all the bell times are, you know, when things are coming up, you know, if suddenly they're going to library or if an SLSO is coming into the room at random points or if kids are going off for language classes or something. So check all of that out. Um, take a photo if you need it. Um, obviously, you know, Oh, just bumping the camera there and deleting it later on. So if you can stick to that routine as best as you can and follow the behavior management strategies, having your own is great. Using what the kids already know is better. Um, so if there's nothing there that you can see, use your own, not a problem. I love Class Dojo. I'm a Class Dojo ambassador. And if you're there first thing in the morning, it only takes you 30 seconds to input a whole new class and you can set up your own dojo for the day and give them a reward at the end of the day. Hey, if the class gets 100 points today, we can have Silent Ball at the end of the day. Whatever works for you. Um, however, I do have a tally chart that I'm going to show you so that at least you can give some feedback to the teacher at the end of the day. So I'm getting to the templates in a minute. Um, so if there is work left for you though, any teacher in their right mind will go, I'm leaving you this work to make the day run smoothly. I'm not dumbing it down for you. I'm not giving you worksheets because I think you can't handle it. I'm giving you this because I know this will help the day run smooth. So if you've started something and it is too easy and the kids have finished early, that's fine. Extend on it. Do something of your own to add to it and note it down. 
if you find it's too hard and the kids are getting nowhere with it um, and they're struggling or you're dealing with behavior and you need to stop, stop. Keep control of that class. That is fine. Just make sure you communicate that to the teacher why you couldn't get through it or what happened. It's not a problem. Sometimes they're things that need to be done. The teacher has said, please make sure they finish their publishing. Um, you know, that's something that obviously they really need done. If, you know, they haven't said this is something that absolutely must need to be done. Use your teacher judgment. We trust you guys. Um, and obviously, um, don't use things that are in the teacher's desk, please. Unless she said, yeah, help yourself to my stickers or the awards or whatever. Um, don't use that. Sometimes we're given a stockpile that we have to use. So maybe we're only given you know, 20 awards for the term and we have to space it out. If you're using those, it's just going to set us all off. Um, some teachers, you know, have to order from overseas to get the special stickers that they want or the stickers that have their name on it. And um, it's happened. I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm judging. I'm saying because this has happened. I had a teacher once who had all of her personalized stickers used for the day. So like, I'm just going to use my name as an example. It said, Mrs. West thinks you're fantastic. Mrs. West thinks you're awesome. All those stickers were used and the kids all went, yeah, look what the teacher gave me. And I was like, really? Why? <laughs> um, so, you know, build your own stock of stickers and stamps and then you're not, you know, running the risk of stepping across someone's boundaries. Okay. The biggest thing that teachers want from anyone who's covering the class for the day is just communication because we'll come back and something will be said and we'll be like, well, I wasn't even here. I don't know. So I'm just going to show you some templates. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you what my templates are that I'll be linking for you. So this is the folder I'm going to share with you guys. This is the template for the daily schedule. So if you're a class teacher and someone is coming in, um, this is an example for you to use. So this is empty. I'll show you what one looks like and I've blacked out um, names. So you can see I've got who the casual teacher is coming in, replacing me, my class, and the date. I've got the times there that these things should run to, and I've just underlined the main thing. So role, guided reading groups, I've given a description of what it is, fruit break, writing with my description, then lunch. If I had a duty, I would be writing my duty there. The warm-up game for maths, the word problem that they need to do, and maths games that they can do if there is um, extra time. And then in the afternoon, science. And then I've put down who my support class is and the executive support. And then I've given them a little blurb just saying, thank you for taking my class today. You'll see that this student doesn't work independently. The SLSO will come in and take him. This is just a bit of extra information for them. Okay, so uh, for rewards, I've just created, sorry, this is a bit of a sheet. So put down the student name and then points. So regardless of whether the teacher uses class dojo or table points or stickers or stamps or anything, if you leave this, um, the kids can get their rewards the next day when the teacher comes. And it's good feedback for the teacher to see who was doing the right thing because, you know, chances are little Johnny, who normally plays up during the day, will be beautiful for you. So it's good for them to get that feedback. This though is the feedback template and I've got it in Word document there for you so you can edit it. But um, this is what I think you should be leaving for the class teacher at the end of the day. So um, whether they've left work for you or not, this is a good thing to fill in. So just put your name, the class that you took in the date, what you did in the morning session, what you did in the middle session, what you did in the afternoon. So let's say you're doing maths in that middle session. And like I said, the work, you know, was, was too hard. This is where you can note it down to say, look, we tried to do the work that you left. Kids had difficulty with blah. Um, we stopped and modified and did blah, blah, blah on the board together. Um, leaving a little message, you know, class was beautiful today. We participated in national simultaneous story time, which means we weren't able to do the maths warm up. You left us. Um, kids had a great day. And then down here, students who worked well so the teacher can give feedback and concerns to follow up. So if there was a playground issue, if someone lost a rubber, or if someone didn't get their turn on the computer, these are the spots that you can put that. So I'm going to leave those templates with a link for you in the description below. So hopefully those templates are, are handy for you. I've got just a couple of points before we round up this one. So at the end of the day, please make sure the room is clean. Um, you know, pack away resources, shut the windows, put furniture away, keep it tidy, turn off the projector, the computer, close and lock the door when you leave it if you have the key. If you, if you can't, make sure you notify someone that it, ha that it has been closed but not locked. 
even if the room was messy when you arrive in the morning leave it neat and tidy because you never know whether the class teacher or not is a messy person you don't know what the reasons were for that classroom being messy we don't judge we just know that we are the person who's leaving it neat and tidy and ready for the next day um, make sure any work that you do is either cited or marked so not all work needs to be marked some of it you do, you're doing as a class you're just reviewing it you're glancing your eye over it tick and sign date at the bottom um, what's helpful is if you can um, get one of those stamps that says you know mrs. West cited dunk and then just put the date um, and then at least that know the the, the, te the classroom teacher knows it's been looked at you've checked it you've stayed on top of the kids you know what's going on um, and like I said you don't need to sit there marking stencils at the end of every single day you just cite that it's been checked circle the things that are incorrect um, if need be uh, if you're sitting down giving feedback to kids note that down as well um, and then at the end of the day, uh, make sure you go back and see that person that's in charge of the casuals, say goodbye, pass on any information that they might need during the day. So if there was a fight or if something went missing or whatever, just say, look, I've left it on the teacher's desk, information for her, contact me if you need more information. Um, and then this is your chance to let them know if you've got work coming up, sorry, if you've got availability coming up. Just say, I'm available for the rest of the week if you need me, because me, as the person who's booking that casual, will remember that straight away, because the first time, the next time someone says to me straight up, oh, I'm going to be sick tomorrow, or I can't come in today, I'm going to, I remember that person told me they're free today, message them first. Um, and that's the best way to make sure you guarantee ongoing work. Um, if you've got any extra tips though about casual teaching or expectations for casual teachers when they come into the room, please pop it in the comments below. Uh, very much appreciate the feedback. So if you like this video, it was helpful, give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm going to pop my button down here. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you hover over that and click to subscribe. I'll pop one of my other videos at the top there and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Don't forget pre-service teacher videos in the middle of the week. Bye!